dance for joy or lust for So welcome to Sensible Second Hand Classics, the uh, show where we take a nostalgic car that's over 15 years old that uh, you can buy for a budget of between one and five thousand pounds. This is a 1979 Morris Marina 1300L Coupe and it's, uh, well, it's better than I thought it would be. So the Marina was a very sort of controversial car in its time. It was brought to market very quickly, a space of about 18 months, all better get, that's good, uh, with parts used from other cars from British Leyland. One of them was a very, very old car indeed. It's one that uh, we've had on the channel before, the Morris Minor. The suspension system in the Marina is actually very, very similar to the Morris Minor. Um, I will actually tell you exactly what the suspension system is later on because it's a very complicated uh, lot of words and uh, you know I'm, I'm not that sort of technical myself so uh, I'll talk we'll, we'll sort of about that later. So when this car came out there were um, three engine options. There was a uh, 1.3 like this one with 57 horsepower. There was also a uh, 1.8 V-series with single carb. That was around 83 horsepower and then the top of the range was the twin carb uh, also a 1.8 B series with 95 horsepower when the car was facelifted for the final time there were two facelifts, one in 1975 one in 1978 um, when this facelifted model was a facelifted one came out the B series was dropped and it was replaced by the modern uh, overhead cam O-series engine, which actually lasted until I think 1994 in certain models of the Montego. That developed about 78 horsepower. So you can see that the car actually got less powerful as it went on, for reasons I don't really understand. To drive, the, the car feels really straight. The gearbox is exactly the same as in my old Triumph Dolomite 1500 SE. It's exactly the same gearbox, which is really, really weird. So I've driven that car, well it was scrapped in 2006, so tell how long ago that was. Steering is actually quite light, um, it's not difficult to manoeuvre particularly. The, the Mark 1 Astro I drove around these cones in December 2021 uh, was a little bit easier to handle than this, but it's not too bad. I mean, I've driven the, I've driven the minor, as I, as I said, and it doesn't, it doesn't feel actually uh, as sort of primitive as one of those does. I mean, the minor's a fun car anyway, but the Lutzi engineering date back to 1948, so you expect that to feel really primitive by 71 and they're discontinued. And this replaced it on the production line to Cowley. And it feels it feels alright. I mean I'm, I'm not able to go very fast at Great British Car Journey where I am. Um, only do about 20 miles an hour. Um, particularly because it's really, really icy today and um, well I don't really want to uh, end up sliding down any hills. But yeah, there's also pretty much gearbox is fine. Brakes do have servo assistance and they do have discs at the front. And you can hear the, the gearbox whining away as well. Hopefully one of these days I'll be able to drive one of these a little bit faster and then we'll see. But steering's actually, it's all right. It's surprisingly nice. No power assistance, of course. You don't get anything like that in a car of this type. One thing you did get in some of these, and they did make a few, um, although <laughs> I don't recommend you drive one, um, was you could get a, uh, a diesel marina. But as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, well, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. Well, viewers, I'm a privileged person today. Look at all these delights which uh, we'll be experiencing. I am a very, very blessed man today. Particularly because uh, we get to have a close look at this uh, Marina Coupe. So it's done very low mileage. It's not perfect by any means. But it's a lot better than when you used to see these when I was younger on the road. So very late Marina this from the 79. 
production of these finished in 1980 when it was replaced by the Atal. They actually got an early Atal in the museum, uh, which I saw last time I was here in December 2021. Mr Joe Miller from Classics World uh, has had a go in this particular car. There's an article, I think, from last June, uh, which uh, goes over a lot of the detail about these. But I think the design of these cars is actually quite nice. Strangely, the lower end coupes like this for 1.3s competed sort of in a, in, a, in a lower price bracket than the saloons. And then the upper end, things like the, uh, the old... Um, 1.8 TC, which was the uh, very early top of the range coupe, competed in a higher price bracket, which is really, really odd. I don't know why that was the case. Some people say that the design was really hampered by the fact that the doors on these cars are the same as the saloons. They look a bit short, but I, I think it looks okay. For something from the late 70s, I, I don't think this is a bad design. I think it actually looks very much of its period, and considering these cars were not designed to last that long, maybe sort of five, six years they were designed to, to last, and actually they lasted a lot longer than that. I think the shape has aged reasonably well. If we uh, look at this, uh, this boot, it's not a hatchback, it's just um, a normal boot. The sort of a Capri by this stage was a hatchback. It's quite a big boot, actually. It's much bigger than, uh, say, I don't know, Mark III Capri, which would have been very, very new at the time. It would have just come out uh, sort of March 78, I think the launch of the Mark III Capri was. And they've got a Mark III Capri, actually, in the museum, if you want to drive it, 1.6 laser. Of course, if you want to drive any any of these cars, um, you can come and do it right here. You can, be, you can be me. And if you think my video's terrible, you can come in and make your own, because they've actually got recording equipment in there. So you can, be, you can be me and improve on my video. So if we get in, we can see this sort of delicious um, fabric. And of course, the famous old door handles that were fitted. I think the last cars to have these were the uh, uh, facelifted Series 1 Discoveries in 1998. So uh, they were very famous. Happily for somebody like me, the indicator and the wiper stalks are actually the conventional way round, although at this time a lot of British cars did have them the other way round. It depends on your preferences or what you want. There's a different dash in here from the earlier marinas. Quite an interesting sort of big glove box in there. Ooh, we will be a secret mission documents fit viewers. We'll have to see. Because this is just a 1300L, we don't have any rev counters or anything like that. All the heater controls are down there, there's the fan speed. A lot of these uh, switches and things look very, very familiar because they're actually in something like kind of, you know, early 90s classic minis and things like that. So light switch is there, there's a fog light switch. Um, I think that's um, for seeing the brake fluid level actually. Uh, heated rear window, no rear wiper, something like that. And uh, the clock is down there, which is silly. I mean, there's plenty of space for a clock either side of these two dials here, um, but we don't have that. Got to, we have got a choke though, which I think I'll be needing to to use that today because it is very, very cold, viewers. Cigarette lighter and ashtray. It's really weird how the whole dash kind of curves like this. It looks like there's sort of, you know, a lot of real estate you could have used, um, but no, never mind. Uh, just a normal four-speed manual on this. It's very similar, if not identical, to the four-speed manual in my 1980 Triumph Dolomite 1500 SE that I had uh, many, many, many years ago. Same position of reverse as well, actually, in that. I think the larger engine ones might have had a different gearbox to this, but I, I can't remember. Yeah, it's reasonably cut. I need to adjust the seat properly. Um, no headrest, though. No headrest at all. And just lots and lots and lots of vinyl. No door pockets. So, uh... Got a fire solution there, it's very sensible. Um, hopefully we'll not be catching fire today. Um, we shouldn't be. And uh, little tiny wipers. Excellent, I'll just have to see if I can get in the back. Ooh, little eyeball vents, there's only two of them as well. Hmm, wonder what is there? Um, probably in a sort of higher spec model we'd have front, front fog lights. Right, let's uh, see if we can get in the back. Right, okay, let's get in the back. Right, Mr. Manning from Matty's Cars, this is for you. 
I know how much you enjoy getting into the back of these old cars. Well, if the seat's quite far forward, actually, there's a lot of space in here. It's probably because the wheelbase is the same as the saloon. And there's a famous old ashtray in there. One per side. Inertia reel seat belts. Yes, please. I really don't like fixed seat belts, Joe. I don't think. <laughs> Um, mentioned that many times before. We don't like fixed seatbelts on this channel. Ooh, these, these are these look very familiar. These uh, good grab handles. Um, yeah, more velour action and vinyl. Strangely, although we've got like nothing in the front, not even a badge for the steering wheel, we do have a rear armrest, which is bizarre. We've also got lots of space for. Both little tissue boxes and things like that on there. Um, I would like some rear seat belts too, but you didn't actually need to have those fitted to the car until 1987. So, no surprise really. This is a very low mileage, um, yet yeah, 30,000 mile car, which is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it would be better to have these as well, but you should buy for an HL or something to get that sort of stuff at this time. Right, let's take a look at the lovely 1.3 A-Series engine. Well, here we are, viewers. The uh, famous 1275 A-Series that dates back to the early 1950s. In this application, it uh, produces about 57 horsepower. I think it's only a single carb on this. Yep, just the one. Um, it looks very lost in here. The biggest engines fitted to marinas we're in Australia with a, a 2.6 six-cylinder engine, an E-Series. In our market, the biggest engine was for 1.8 B-Series. Uh, most powerful one of those was the 95 horsepower uh, twin car model. You could also get later on in 1978 when the car was facelifted for the final time. A uh, 1.7 O-Series, the brand new O-Series at the time, which replaced the B-Series in this particular car. I think actually the facelift is quite successful, it makes the car look a lot more modern. Uh, but I'm very strange, I think the Itals look even better than these. I mean, I, I'm going to get absolutely murdered in the comments section for saying things like that, but it's just, uh, um, you know, my, uh, my personal preference. And also I've heard that the Ital that's in the museum is actually going to be available for drive later this year. And I'm looking forward to that very, very much indeed, viewers. Uh, so I'll have to come back and do that if they'll let me. One thing I've noticed is that, uh, unlike some of the cars of so driven, we've actually got a brake servo. It's not even a remote one, it's right in front of me. So hopefully the brakes won't be terrible, um, which uh, you know will be an advantage. Right, let's uh, take out this uh, brown vinyl roof marina for a little spin again. So this isn't a horrific car by any means, I gather the really early 1.8s were quite prone to understeer but that was solved quite early on after the sort of press sort of said to a British Leyland that it wasn't acceptable really to have a car like that and they were listened to and the reviews were well relatively kind to the car because it was a you know, modern looking thing even though some of the components were very old. It's, Good old push-pull steering here is taking me around this car park. Yeah, it's quite it's quite pleasant really. I'd like to try maybe the bigger engine one to see what that's actually like. But this is uh, this is fine, it's not gonna win any speed awards, but then a lot of people who were family motorists in the 70s, this would have been absolutely fine. Lloyd Logan Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. Let's now have a look at uh, some of the places where <laughs> the Morris Marina was made. Unsurprisingly, a lot of these places are in the former um, kind of Commonwealth countries, uh, or in some cases, current Commonwealth countries. They were also built in Australia, South Africa, uh, Malaysia, Malta, and New Zealand. This is a 79 car. The facelift occurred in 1975, and then also 78 when the uh, B-series engine nutrition was dropped. I said earlier on that I would talk about uh, the suspension of the marina and it's uh, 
quite a complicated description. It's longitudinal torsion bars with lower wishbone and lever arm dampers at the front and leaf springs at the back. Um, I can't possibly remember all that sort of stuff uh, when I'm driving viewers. It's a bit too difficult for me. So, should you consider a Morris Marina as a sensible second-hand classic uh, for a budget of uh, between one and five thousand pounds? Prices of these are rising. I imagine this car is probably worth more than that because of the mileage and the condition of it. Um, the biggest problem is going to be finding one of these. There are not many around. Um, not many around at all. Um, it's not really surprising. They were at one point the second best-selling car in this country, I believe. Um, so they made lots of them and they devalued quite quickly. They rusted very, very well. Um, and in, as in the rust was very bad. And uh, a certain program <laughs> broadcast in the 2000s, um, as well as many other influences, made this car a bit of a joke. I don't think it is. I think this is a much better car than I imagined it would be. So there's some very strange choices in this car, uh, such as um, the fact that the Hazlight switch is over there, um, and uh, we've just got, well, just a blanking plate where the radio should be, but never mind. I quite enjoyed it, actually, yes. Um, but maybe that's not so much a surprise. Anyway, uh, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Thank you to the team at Red British Car Journey for letting me have a go in this car and many others today. And uh, we shall see you again very soon for more reasonably priced nostalgic motoring. Thank you.